A moment of triumph takes a scary turn. Jungkook, the youngest member, falls terribly ill. The Wings tour officially kicks off with a bang in Seoul, Korea. Experience firsthand how BTS feeds off the energy of their fans while they tackle the numerous challenges put before them. The complications of long distance traveling, rehearsing in new venues, and tweaking their performances to perfection, all while still working on new music. Unfortunately, the grueling schedule takes a toll and the members are dealt a scare in Chile. Hey guys, uh, it's Jose and I'm back for episode two. You already have the answer of uh, Burn the Stage. R my recap review, I'm sorry if I'm having a hard time saying everything correctly because this was a very emotional episode and uh, I finished watching it like 30 minutes ago and uh, tried to compile everything so that I can review it or recap it for you guys. Uh, spoilers, uh, this video will contain spoilers if you have not watched this um, and do not want to be spoiled, do not watch. Um, if you don't mind, then continue watching. I will be recapping the episode and like I mentioned in my episode one recap review, uh, this is not a reaction video for obvious copyright reasons. The content is owned by YouTube Red, so I know I'll be automatically striked if I do a reaction video to it. Um, and I already went through that and I don't want any trouble getting my channel deleted again. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, this was a very emotional episode, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So without further ado, let's get into episode two. You already have the answer. We start off with clips of the guys rehearsing in Seoul. Um, and uh, while they are rehearsing the uh, intro, the most beautiful moment in life part one is playing in the background, which I think is like, it fits perfectly with, uh, with it fits perfectly with like the clips that are being shown because it's like dramatic, Yoongi's uh, breath, um, and his rap, it just makes it more intense, but also it ties in with the title of the episode, which is you already know the answer because um, in the lyrics of intro, excuse me, intro, the most beautiful moment in life, part one, there is a part where he says, uh, I, I ask myself, like, are you happy? And you already know the answer. Yes, I am happy. So I think it, it all ties in. Um, so that was a little special treat for us. I don't know if many of you caught it. They they tied in with like the the the, the songs that they've done. Um, right after that, we cut into the rehearsals on February fifth, and again we are in Seoul, Korea. Um, we are closer to the actual uh, start of the tour. The guys are talking about how this tour will be different than the Red Bullet tour, which was their previous world tour that they did before the Wings tour. Uh, in their individual interviews, Namjoon says how back then they would worry about not having enough hit songs or not having enough songs in general to perform. Um, and now that they're in better conditions, um, they're just worried about delivering a great show and doing the best that they can in the show. And in between uh, these uh, interviews, I love how they're showing how they're so involved in their own stages and their own performances. How um, they're at, like, they're not just, hey, I arrived, uh, where do I stand? Uh, mic check, one, two, three, let me sing. And then everybody else decides like where to go. Like not everybody else decides where to go, but like the staff decides, do you know what I'm saying? Like the staff is like, oh, you're gonna be over here. You're gonna be over here. Although they have some input. I'm pretty sure like choreographers tells them like, you're gonna do this or this might look better or whatever. They're also very involved in their own like performances, their own stages because they are performing their individual songs. Uh, there's a part with Jimin He's shown like uh, telling a staff member, uh, um, telling him like uh, it. I have to do it differently. I have to raise my voice. I'm thinking he's he's like I need to raise it maybe because it won't be heard over the music, over the backtrack. I don't know exactly what he means by that, but he does say that he has to raise his voice. And one of the staff members says uh, we can lower the key for you to like I guess to make it easier for him. But I love the fact that like he tells him like. 
like he doesn't finish the sentence but but uh he says like i don't think i think he's he wanted to say like i don't think that's that's okay i don't think that's like that's not good for him like he wants to be able to hit that note you know what i'm saying like he wants to be able to deliver the song how it's meant to be and lowering that key like the staff member says although hey it, it's to help him out it's to deliver a great performance he feels like it's I think he feels like it's not the best thing to do, which, like I said, I think it's so cool. Like, they're so involved. Like, the staff is asking them and their input and their them, themselves are like, you know what, let me do it this way or let me not do it this way or let's work it like this to make it better, you know, for the audience. And like I said, uh, throughout, we see, like, clips of interviews, of their individual interviews. And the guys are talking about how they want this to be, like, a really, really good show. Um, which it was because, like I said, I went to the Newark stop. Uh, 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 it was one of the best nights of my life. Uh, so, they did that. Like, y'all y'all did that. Um, so, don't worry about not that you didn't deliver a great show. <laughs> one of the quotes that... Um, stood out to me um i i think i'm gonna be doing this for like recaps and reviews like uh certain things that the guys say that like st stand out to me one was with uh Jin, and i and i quote whether it's a world tour or an event they're coming to see us because they like us so i want to have an attitude of gratitude <sighs> i just love the guys that they're so uh open about wanting to deliver such a great show not just because Yes, the accolades come with it, the respect, uh, all these media outlets are going to write about it, you know, like uh, journalists are going to write about it, like, yo, this show was so good, or they did this, they did that, it's great, you need to go watch, which, at the end of the day, it does help, you know, it does help them, but they put us first, like, they put the army first, and they're like, like Jen says, like they came to see us, so I have to have an attitude of gratitude. By the way, that rhymed. I was like, that could be a lyric, <laughs> but um, I just love the fact that they're like, you know, we need to, we need to have that in mind. Like we are here because of them, like because of us, and we're like, oh my god, like you know what I mean? Like it's just, I love the fact that the guys express how much they are uh, appreciative of us and how much we love them and how much we support them, and they want to give that. Not not give that support back. Give that love back. Well, I guess it could be support. support they go love and uh, they go hand in hand. But I just love the fact that they include that stuff uh, in the documentary, so that we people who don't know them, people who do know don't know this side of the guys, get to know that like they really really do love us. We then cut to D Day, which is the first day of the tour in Seoul, Korea. We are still in Seoul. Uh, this is February 18th and 19th uh, at the Sky Dome. We have clips of uh, fans, uh, the army going into the Sky Dome and like getting ready. The stage is setting, is being set up. Just everything getting prepared for the first night of the Wings tour. Of course, we are shown clips of the guys getting ready, getting their makeup, their uh, clothes ready for the opening number. Um, and we have Namjoon hyping the guys up, you know, doing their team cheer, like, let's get ready, let's do this, let's show the guy, let's show the guys, let's show the audience a great show. Um, so I love the fact that they included that as well. And the show kicks off with Not Today, which is such a powerful performance and such a great way to start it. Like, I think any song would go well to start it off, like, the show. Like, they don't have a bad song. Uh, so, I would be okay with any of the songs starting off the show. But at the fact that it's not today, it's like, boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, I'm okay, I'm here. Okay, sorry, I, it took me back. We are then uh, shown, th like I said, throughout the um, docu series, we are shown uh, their individual interviews. Um, the ones that are concentrated on in this certain moment is uh, Hobie and Yungi. Um, in their individual interviews, express how they want to, how they don't want to disappoint, and they have a sense of duty to deliver a great show. Jimin says they don't ask for anything back; they support us purely. This is so true. Like. As ARMY, we love and support them regardless. Like, how do I say it? Um, they, uh, I, 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 it's so true. Like, we're not, we don't ask anything in return. We don't put conditions on the support and the love. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, oh, um, we only are going to support you 
this is just at the top of my head uh we're only going to support you if you come back in the summer like do you know what i mean I, it's a crazy uh condition but it's the first thing that came to my head what i'm trying to say is just conditions in general we don't put any like whatever they release uh we're gonna be there and we're gonna support um individually as a group uh individual activities whatever they have going on we're gonna do it and i love the fact that they know that like jim and expresses it like you know like they support us purely. They don't ask anything back. And I want to repay the love and the support. And another quote that stood out was when Namjoon adds, we want to be a part of their lives. Um, sorry, we want to be a part of the lives of those who love us so that we can be of big help to them. And to that, Namjoon, let me tell you, you are. Personally speaking, I know I, I'm speaking for a lot of people out there, a lot of ARMY. Um, you are a part of our lives and you have helped us for the better. I know for myself, you have helped me in a lot of ways, but in positive ways, your songs, your performances, your music videos. But, um, I think at the end of the day, it really, am, um, it really is the song, like the music. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, the music videos add to it. The performances add to it. To me, it's like the music and you guys, like the talent. It's the talent. Like, oh, that just, oh, sorry. It just clicked in my, like, it's the talent. Um, the writing, the lyrics, like I said, uh, writing lyrics, the music, the amount of work that you guys put into it. You are a big part of our lives and you do help so many. Just know that for sure. And I can tell you that for me, you have in a very positive way and i love you guys for that so then we cut to the show ending and the guys um happy um saying like telling the staff members and the guys themselves like great job great job um by the way this is it hobie's birthday february 18th so they're celebrating hobie's birthday a uh, backstage we have Jin ready to like start singing happy birthday and has his cake in hand um they give it to hobie and they're singing happy birthday what's funny is like jimin tries to be like he tries to play like he does play uh but he tries to make it like playful like oh we're not gonna play we said we weren't gonna play with like food i believe he says and then like he grabs like a, a piece of like the um the uh buttercream or i don't the cream whatever and like tries to like uh uh get it on hobie and he does get it on hobie but what he doesn't realize is like i think he like pushed him a little bit where like he loses a little bit of his balance and hobie has his cake on his hand and like he drops the cake but not only does he drop it he drops it on top of Yungi's bag and Yungi is like he's sitting on the edge of a couch on the on the like the rest the armrest of a couch and I, his bag is like behind him so like it didn't land on Yungi I don't think it did I I'm pretty sure it didn't I didn't see any um cream on his or maybe he I'm gonna have to rewatch that little clip but he gets it all over his bag um he does say the f word uh, they don't show it but um one of the members just pointed out like he said the f word <laughs> And he's so sorry about it, and and he just starts cheering like Park Jimin, Park Jimin. like um, Yungi starts saying that because he knows it was like Jimin's fault, and Jimin's like, oh, my. he's so like, I'm sorry, and it, and like he gets on his knees and everything. But it's so cute because the picture they start taking pictures. You know those pictures that they post on like Twitter um, of them after the show, and they have like these signs. I don't know what they say. It's in Korean, obviously, but um, they're like happy like after the show, like hey, we just finished our show. It's so cool to see that, like, before that picture, that happened. Um, and as you can tell, like, it was Hobie's birthday, so obviously Yungi wasn't going to get mad. I don't think he would get mad even if it wasn't his birthday. Maybe he a little bit, but because it's his birthday, he's probably was like, oh, he gets a pass or something, you know, because it is Hobie's birthday and he's not going to get mad. At and by the way, I mean, he can buy another one. It's materialistic, you know, nothing, nobody was harmed. Um, it was just his bag. But, I mean, I... I, I it's it would be normal if he was like maybe a little bit like pissed like yo that's my bag it cost me a lot of money because they do say like it's expensive um but i mean he can buy another one because he got that okay let me let me i need to keep these these professional i'm trying to be professional y'all know i can be okay and one thing that i love so much while this was going on was um that spring day was playing in the background and right after this clip of um the cake incident um 
the part that's highlighted is taste part, which is my favorite part in Spring Day, which is, you know it all, you're my best friend. I love the fact that they, like, they, they, they put stuff that fits so well. Like, the people, the editors, uh, producers of this, they know what to do. Like, they know what, they're like, you know what, this fits goes, this goes fits, this goes fits, this fits goes. Can you, sorry guys, y'all know I'm a mess. Um, but you know what I'm trying to say, like it fits well and we're going to do it like this and it just, uh, it fits so well and it adds more, uh, it makes it more intense. Yeah. Like it just makes it more intense, more, uh, more enjoyable, more entertaining, I guess I should say. Yeah. <laughs> so after that, we cut to March 10th and the guys have arrived in Santiago, Chile, but they've arrived, but they haven't even gotten off the plane. They already have issues going on. At first, I was, like, worried. I was, like, what's going on? Because I kind of looked, like, serious on the plane because I, I thought maybe, like, oh, like, is someone, like, feeling sick or something? But no. Uh, Namjoon has lost his passport again. <laughs> That's happened before, guys. I just thought it was so cute. And it, the guys are all, like, stressing out. Everybody's wor look, working, around, working around. Well, yeah, working, looking for it. <laughs> um, the... Uh, plane like staff the airplane staff or like the the um the flight attendants why why the hell can i talk today sorry guys uh the flight attendants um are looking for it uh they're they're like talking and like we can't get in chile if he doesn't have his passport like they can get off the plane but they can't like they can't get they can't go farther than the airport like they're gonna look at his passport so we can't go in if we don't have a passport <laughs> So um, they start looking around like some guy like he's blurred out and they don't put like who he is, but he speaks English. So he starts talking to Namjoon and I guess they're figuring out like what can be done. Uh, what, like if I don't have it, like can I get in or I guess that's what they're saying. But finally, somebody finds the passport. The guys are so relieved. Everybody is really they're like, oh, my God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it was the pilot. I don't know. He like the guy that like handed it to him looked like he had like that pilot uniform but it could have been a flight attendant i don't know but um namjoon is like thank you you saved my life and at as soon as he said that he's like out like he's like ready to leave the plane like he's i guess he was embarrassed and he's just like ready to go one thing that pointed out was like yungi was like i'm not surprised anymore hobie was like we need to tie his passport to his neck from now on <laughs> i'm just like oh poor namjoon but like I said, they, were, they weren't like pissed or anything. But it was funny because like, I was about to curse you. I think wh Hobie was, was said that or Jin or, or Cookie. Somebody said like I was about to curse him out. I was so scared. But like all the guys are like, thank you, thank you, thank you. So they finally get off. We cut to like the guys leaving the airport. And obviously the army, the Chilean army, were ready to receive the guys. Um, they go on to their shuttle. Um, I don't know. I, they don't show if, like from the airport. They went straight to a restaurant. I don't know if they go to their hotel, but they just don't show that part. Uh, but the army is following them on the shuttle. They're practicing their English. Um, Namjoon teaches them how to say, um, what was that in a cool way, which is what's that like they because they were like, that's how you say what's what's that is how uh, you shorten like what was that so they start saying it and it's so cute because jungkook and v are speaking english like i think junk no tay is the one who says like can you speak a little slush and he was trying to say slowly but he says slush and then cookie's like oh i want a slush <laughs> i just thought it was so cute uh, but like i said i think they did go to the airport i mean to the hotel first and then to the restaurant but like the next clip that we see is them arriving at a restaurant at a korean restaurant but yungi is not there and that's the reason i feel like they did go to the hotel because they had to drop off yungi unless yungi got in another car and they took yungi to the hotel and they went straight to the uh restaurant we don't know that i don't know that part like they don't explain that but the next scene is them getting off the shuttle into the Korean restaurant. Yoongi was working, uh, so that's why he didn't make it to the restaurant. But the rest of the guys are. And they're having fun. We're, we cut to those clips where they're eating, having fun. Um, Cookie, he's always making the guys laugh. And I, oh, I just love Cookie so much. But um, Cookie like, starts 
performing in the restaurant. He starts performing Mama and Lie. Uh, but the funny, funniest one is when he's doing Lie because he's like imitating the moves that Jimin does, but like exaggerating the most, doing the most because he is extra as fuck. <laughs> so um, that's enjoyable because the guys are like laughing. Jimin is laughing along. Um, and then what, what I thought was cute by the end of the dinner, Hobie's like, we need to take Yoongi some... Uh, food and then uh, yeah pack it up for him so then we cut to uh hobie at the hotel in the hallway knocking on yungi's door and when yungi answers the door whatever's going on in there it was top secret because he only opened it like a little uh, well it doesn't even have to be top secret he he also needs his privacy too I'm, i was just joking about that <laughs> but um uh, Yungi's like, yeah, like, like, I guess he's asking, like, who is it? And it's like, oh, I'm your hope. <laughs> and like, Hobie gives him his food. He's like, hey, bro, like, I bought you, uh, we got you some food. Um, and it's, he's, he cracks it. This, I don't even know how, like, it, he doesn't even open, like, the, like, the door, like, um, because he said he just, he's just, ref he looks so refreshed. Like, after closing the door, Hobie says, he looks so refreshed. So I, either he took a shower or he, he took a nap and, um, woke up to um, with the knock of the door. I don't know, but I thought it was so cute that like Yungi's like, I'm not opening this door. I'm not showing myself to the camera because he's literally like pulling the food, like trying to get it in that little opening of the door. And like even Hobie's like, oh, like let me push it. They like slide it up to the top. Like he's trying to get it on, and then he finally gets it. I just thought it was so cute that they showed that little part. And like I said, I just love how they're putting so many things into these episodes. Like this one was a little bit longer than the first. The first one was 21. This one was 26 minutes. Uh, but I just love the fact that they're like, let's put in these little clips. Like they they could have cut it out. They could have cut that part of of Hobie giving him the food. You know what I'm saying? But no, they were like, no, let's show it because they care so much about each other. We want to we want our viewers to see that they're not just working together. You know what I'm saying? Like they're actual like friends. They care about each other. So I love that a lot. So it is now March 11th and 12th, and we're show um, the for the shows in Chile, which is our uh, the days of the shows. And we see Army outside um, dancing, uh, doing the fan chants, screaming, yelling, getting excited for the shows. Um, and you guys came out like, of course, everything sold out. But like, it was just so cool to see these shots of all the fans in Chile um, and from other countries. I think they show like Argentina, Peru, like people with their flags from other countries from Latin America that went to Chile to see them. So I thought it was so cool that they showed those parts as well. And in their individual interviews, the guys say that like it was really hot in Chile, but they they were like it, not like in, in just like the. Um, environment like well yeah the environment what I'm trying to say is like the temperature like it wasn't just like hot hot uh, literally hot it was also like their energy like the fans like they it was like it was such a fun show like their energy we feed off of it and um, they feed off of us so it's like a full circle you know what I'm saying like and it just makes it two Yungi says two or three times even more like fun more intense so um I love the fact that they express it. Like I said, I just love that throughout this whole docuseries, they're expressing so much how they love how we support them. Okay, and now we're going to get into like these inten more intense moments. And uh, let me tell you guys, I got emotional when I watched it. And uh, I'm going to do my best to get through this. We start off with Jimin. And uh, Jimin in his individual interviews is saying how um, he gets really stressed out performing live. Um, he wants it to be like perfect. He wants to his vocals be perfect. Like obviously, I mean, I think like um, all of the guys want that. But he's really hard on himself. Like Jimin is really hard on himself. And um, they show a clip of him like he performs it, and then they show a clip of him like with a different outfit already. But he's backstage, and he's sitting down. I think he's getting ready to go on stage, or uh, maybe. Uh, um, it, it just happened. No, I don't. I think he's getting ready to perform. I think he's ready because uh, he's it's the um, outfit with Lost that they perform Lost. Um, and uh, he's talking to one of the staff members. And uh, I believe I think it's staff member. <laughs> and he's like, I messed up. And the staff members like, no, you did. not it was just like those two things or those two moments. Um, one of them being that his voice cracked. He says it. He's like, my voice cracked. And then the other one was, uh, he said that his mic fell off. Um, and in his individual interview, he says how, like, those things, like, stress him out. Like, it it, it really does stress him out. Um, 
then it cuts to him like actually like crying like he's he's crying uh and then in his interview he says that he he knows that like people might think that it's not a big deal uh but to him it is and the reason he says it's a big deal to him is because that's the one thing that uh makes him feel guilty and like i i want him to like know that like there's nothing to feel guilty about uh your performances are perfect. Even with mistakes, they're perfect because you're giving your all. You know what I mean? I feel like you know what I'm saying. But at the same time, as an army, I have we have to like respect him and his uh, feelings towards that because, like he says, he we might be like, oh, that's not a big deal, Jim. And like, so what? The mic fell off. So what? Uh, your voice cracked. Like we still enjoyed it, but to him, it is a big deal. So it's a it's a tough scene to watch and like to like take in because you're like uh like well i was i was a bit torn because i was like i want him to know that like what he does is is enough and it's perfect but at the same time it's like it's like he says like i i know people might think it's not a big deal but it is to me so we also have to respect that that it's like okay it is a big deal to him so we shouldn't just like brush it off like oh it was just a little like you know what i'm saying like it's just tough it's just one thing that like i guess and I don't know, I, like, we, I just want him to know that, like, he shouldn't feel guilty. I guess that's what I'm trying to, like, he shouldn't feel guilty. But I, I understand what he means by, like, it is a big deal. Because a lot of stuff that, like, it could be in daily life. So, like, we have stuff that, like, it's a big deal to us and to other people might not be. And we want them to understand, like, yes, I know it's not a big deal to you. But can you at least respect that it is for me? And that's where it's like, ah, you know. It's a little. It's. I guess it's just a balance that I guess we have to find as army <laughs> with uh, with them. Um, but I just. Uh, it's just because Jimin is so hard on himself, and I just hope uh, with with time it, that that part of him like relaxes a little bit. You know, like that he knows that it's enough what he does because it's perfect what he does. So I'm going through it. We're going through it. If you watch the episode, and after this scene. It's Jungkook. And, uh... Woo! Uh, it's tough, man. Uh, because you see a... It's like... I don't know how much more raw you can get. He... I guess it's... A, it, it is at the end of a performance because he's... Their guys are, like, going to their own sections i guess they they want a little bit moment to like cool off and he goes to this area where like there's a couch i feel like this is where like artists chill right before they're about to get on stage like um because there's a couch and there's stuff around them and he's on the couch and he's like trying to catch his breath trying to catch air and you can see he's like weak you can tell he can he's he's like about to pass out uh, staff is there to help him. They put ice on his back. They start fanning him. They're just, they're worried, you know? And that's one thing that I like that they show too, that the staff is there to help. Like they're, no, uh, that they're showing everything um, because he could have just been somewhere by himself, like dealing with it. And no, they're like, no, the staff is on there, uh, on them trying to help right after the performances, you know? Because it's not just him. Like, Ho they show Hobie as well. Like, they're fanning him. They put eyes on him and um, the rest of the guys as well. Uh, with Jimin, when he was crying, they were showing him that too, where they're putting eyes on his uh, back. Uh, but with Jungkook, it just, I uh, was like, oh my God, like, they are really showing everything because he's like literally about to pass out. And throughout this scene, um, they're showing his individual interview, um, along with Hobie and Namjoon too. Hobie mentioning that like he, he's never seen that. Uh, Namjoon saying that it was unexpected, and with Hobie saying like they've never seen that, and then Namjoon says I even like quoted it because it says he says I realize Jungkook is also human. He never shows how exhausted he is. You can never tell. Along with that, with Hobie saying, like, I've never seen that. This, uh, that got me. Because who knows how many times, like, he's been in a lot of pain. 
and he's just hid it from the rest of the members. It's just that this time it was too much that he just couldn't hide it. You know what I mean? And that's what made me, I was like, whoa, like this time it was so much that he just couldn't hide it. He, it was too much for him to bear. And past, like maybe past times he was at that limit, but he was able to control it and be like, let me not show it because I don't want people to think that like, because he, 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 he is that type of guy. Like he wants to do everything really, really well, and he does. But he's and he's willing to sacrifice like his health for it. It's just like, oh my God, Jungkook. Like I, that's why I love our leader Namjoon because it shows him say, like telling him like, are you okay? Like slow down. Like don't overwork yourself. It's just really tough to watch. And uh, I'm a I'm a try and like. As a viewer, as an army, it was really tough to watch. And uh, and I'm not... And you guys might be like, oh, you're just Jungkook biased. That's why... No. Because I would react this way with any of the members if they were um, going through this. And I'm sure they have, too. It's just that it's just that um, they caught Jungkook this time. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just saying, like, it's very intense because they... They say it like we've never seen it. Like it's unexpected. And the fact that Namjoon says, like, I realize that Jungkook is human too because he does everything so well. He can pretty much do anything. There's like, are you even human? Yes. Yes, he is. He is human. And this time it was just too much for him to hide. And I hope, I hope after that he was like, you know what? Like, it's not worth me hiding this pain because sometimes that can lead to something else down the line. And I just hope nothing happens, you know, like complications arise or anything like that. So I hope he feels comfortable enough after this to be like, you know what, you guys or to the staff or his manager or somebody like, yo, I'm not feeling that well right now. Can like I take a little break or something? Because right when they're about to like finish, I because uh, it's outro wings that they're going to be- perform, they're like, Jimmy, you go first. Uh, we can wait. Like, they're trying to figure out, like, how to give him a little bit more time to relax. Which, by the way, I love so much that, like, Jimin get uh, Jimin, sorry. Junko gets up and, like, continues performing. Like, that's how much he loves what he does. And not just only that, loves us to deliver a great performance. Because he gets out on the stage like nothing happened. Like, I'm pretty sure the audience in that show didn't, like, couldn't tell that, like, what was happening backstage like minutes ago seconds ago it was just i got really moved and i'm getting again i'm getting again because i'm going back to the scene and it was a lot and i just you know i commend them and i admire them for showing this much in the episode um i don't know if we're gonna get more actually yes i do because the preview for the next episode shows him even like struggling even more i was like wait i thought that was it like i'm not ready (laughs) but um yeah like it was tough to watch but great to see that he was okay and in his interview he's like happy and like laughing and be like and he's like, I just overworked myself. I under, I overestimated myself. Um, and uh, after this, like, um, the uh, Jimin and Cookie are the ones who end with his, their interviews. Um, the guys are performing Save Me. Um, and I want to get it right right here. Jimin uh, and Cookie, they both state that they know they don't visit Chile um, and other countries as often. Um, that's why they wanted to give a great show. Jungkook closes by saying that... Um, he knew his body wasn't good before starting the show, um, but because he knew that they they because he didn't know when they would go back to Chile, he wanted to give their his all. So like he risked it all for the fans, and that's what oh, you know like it's just like it gets you. Uh, for me, I just I couldn't get through it without getting emotional. And uh, I didn't bring out the Kleenex. I didn't take your recommendations. I was like, I don't. I think I'm gonna be able to handle it, which was a mistake. But I had my fingers. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that was episode two. And like I said, episode three, we get a little preview that like he's still struggling. I'm not ready for that, which is next week. I just okay. Yeah, I I love the episode, even though it was really tough. Some tough clips. And scenes to watch, I loved it. 
I love them so much. Thank you guys for watching my recap review of episode two. Uh, tune, next, tune in next week for episode three. I love you guys. Comment, like, subscribe. Tell me what you thought. Um, don't spoil um, episode three. I mean, it hasn't come out, but what I'm trying to say is like, uh, when it does come out, don't start spoiling it in this video because I'm obviously gonna upload a recap review after I watch it. Thank you so much guys, like, comment, subscribe, share, and until next time, adios.